Good afternoon and welcome to Beach Park, home of Kildara RFC for the 90th edition of the Bank of Ireland Provincial Towns Cup Final between Enniscorthy and Kilkenny. My name is Gordon Black. With me today sharing commentary duties is Dermot O'Mahony, the Leinster Branch Club Administrator who organises this competition. Dermot, with your vast knowledge of Leinster Junior Rugby, how do you see today's match unfolding and who will you bestow with the O'Mahony Kiss of Death? Thank you, Gordon. Yeah, it's a lovely day here in, in Beach Park, home of Kildare Rugby Club. Uh, we're just about to get underway. Uh, Enes Gorty come in as uh, set runners up in Leinster League Division 1A. Uh, they were the only team to have beaten the eventual winners, Dundalk. And uh, Kilkenny won Division 1B. And of course, we're trying to make up for last year's extra time loss against Ashburn. So uh, it's uh, a game. Uh, I suppose it's a local derby as well, could go either way, but I suppose my uh, kiss of death will be on um, Ennis Gorty narrowly prevailing. Interesting that uh, of course Dundalk play in black as do Kilkenny here today who will be playing left to right on your on your screen um, and of course Ennis Gorty did beat uh, Dundalk three times, twice in the league and once in the cup, so maybe the, the wearing of, of the black colour is synonymous with a good day for them. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just looking at this uh, an opening line out for uh, Kilkenny, which has been uh, taken by their uh, Martin Lahey, uh, who is Martin actually played rugby here for Kildare a few years ago, uh, but it's been taken by Ennis Gorthy, and they're setting up a, a, a rook outside their own 22. Uh, Ivan Poole kicks the ball up in the air, but there's a there's a wind uh, which is blown uh, across field. And the referee, Tim Townen. So you've something to tell us about Tim Townen, of for Scrum, and you can uh, fill us in on Tim Townen's yeah, dad, can't you? Tim uh, is a, a New Zealander. He's been here now for a number of years. I would first come across him on the, on the cricket field. And we'd like to say hello to his father, Paul, in South Canterbury in New Zealand. Apparently the family are staying up uh, late. It's about half past two in the morning there to watch this telecast live here from Beach Park. Uh, Tim... Uh, I was a bit surprised to, to uh, I'll say this to his father to see him uh, refereeing because I do happen to umpire a bit of cricket during the summer and to say that Tim is questioning of every decision that doesn't go in his favour in a cricket field will be an understatement. But uh, a super guy and um, oh, uh, first penalty of the match, uh, not binding the number six for Ennis Gorthy, uh, Sean Wall. And this would be a very kickable penalty for Dundalk because there is a strong breeze, Dermot, blowing uh, there, from left to right here. Yeah, there is a very strong breeze. Uh, there's, a f there's a few showers forecast for the afternoon as well, but it's been a glorious uh, morning and early afternoon here in Kildare. Um, the, the sun has been shining all day long. We've had no rain so far. Hopefully, uh, if we do get any showers, it'll be uh, very, very minimal. But uh, out half Rory McInerney is lining this kick up. It's about 45 metres out. Uh, there's a very tricky wind here blowing, and while it may be assisting him, it's uh, also blowing, uh, I think it's blowing into a corner rather than straight down. So uh, um, let's you, see how. You would know from uh, being a local here, Dermot, uh, how the wind normally prevails here. Is it as per normal and teams playing left to right tend to have the advantage? No, it normally favours teams playing from left to right. It's not the normal breeze today, it's, it's not quite the prevailing breeze which normally goes into the into the far corner, uh, the, the left corner as uh, down at the bottom as we look down now. Here comes McInerney starting his run up. He struck it very well but I think he's pushed it a little to the right, has he? Uh, indeed he has and it uh, ambles into the uh, dead ball zone and he'll be a 22 metre dropout for and a scorty. So yes, there's the first chance of the day gone a begging. Well, I wonder what it'd be like the, uh, last year, Dermot, when we had two very good kickers for Ashford and, and Kilkenny, who managed to miss a clatter of penalties between them. Um, poor display last year of, of, of face kicking. Let's hope it's a bit better today. Now, McInerney has it again. And again, he's going to kick the position. And has he overcooked that one? I think he has. It's going to be a. Yep. It'll be a scrum back. And where he kicked it from, overcooked it. That's two two errors by Roy McInerney uh, to start the game for us. Yeah, probably more a sign of nerves here. It's a it's a big occasion for these players. Uh, Provincial Towns Cup final is always a huge occasion. There's a good crowd here. To, as I look over to my right, the cars are still coming in here. There was a, a bit of congestion outside the Kildare Village, which I think is going to delay a few supporters from from both sides. Um, but it's uh, the second scrum of the game. Uh, the first one was to Kilkenny, which they won pretty well, under a little bit of pressure, uh, but they did get a penalty from it. So uh, this time it's Evan Lett, 
uh, to apply the feed, but uh, the scrum has gone down, so it'll be reset by, by the referee. Uh, Evan Lett, whose brother Killian is playing uh, in the centre. He's the captain also, isn't he? He is indeed, and of course he's the son of the famous Dougie Lett, Dougie who received a Mr. Mr. Boots Award last week for, uh, for uh, services to junior rugby, which is a national award, uh, and uh, uh, the Lett family would be synonymous with rugby in Enniscorthy. And of course these are two teams that would have proud histories in the Towns Cup. Enniscorthy have won it six times, and Kilkenny on five occasions. Um, and Escorty have won it, but the ball has been, uh, it's not the best ball in the world, but it gets back to out half Ivan Poole, uh, out to Killian Lett, uh, who drives forward, sets up the, the rook, but uh, the referee has an arm out for advantage and uh, he doesn't let it go very long. Penalty to Enniscorty. Interesting that, that scrum, uh, Enniscorty under a fair bit of pressure there, Dermot. I met uh, the former Irish fullback, Tony Enser, at a, uh, a very good lunch yesterday and he was saying that if, the, if the, he reckons if Enniscorthy gets any kind of reasonable ball at all they have a very good back line but he doesn't think their pack are particularly strong. Yeah I, I wouldn't disagree with him on that uh, it, it, it's a very good back line to have it's uh, AIL quality back line uh, a lot of them have played at, at, at a higher level uh, while they're all locals uh, or nearly all locals uh, they, they would have uh, a lot of them would have uh, played rugby at AIL standard uh, so it's quite a good back line so uh, Enniscorthy with the ball again uh, driving forward on their own 10 metre line referee holds the hand out for advantage again it looks like a, a breakdown infringement again by um, by Kilkenny yes not releasing the player on the ground Killian Lett tried to take a quick tap there but brought back by the referee uh, that's four penalties now let's hope that this is not going to become a, a penalty fest um, the referees like to set their stall out early on let the sides know uh, that they won't but they won't tolerate um, the breakdown of course is uh, a problem at all levels in the game that they, especially the, the tackler not releasing the tackle player on the, on the ground so now a line out to Dennis Gorthy five man line out uh, well, well taken there by yeah. Sean Wall uh, and Scorthy driving forward it's a good ball by Enniscorthy. It was Tomas Stamp actually, the lock forward, who won that line out. And uh, they're driving forward, they're in control here. Uh, the peels off it, and it's Decky O'Brien, the veteran second row. But the ball comes off his leg, bounces loose. Kilkenny gather. McInerney spreads it wide. Now, what can Kilkenny do here? Ball goes to Joe Manuel. Joe sends it out to the wing, and it's, uh, it's the opposite winger, uh, um, Sean Morton, who's tackled inside the 10 metre line of Enniscorthy. Uh, scrum half, Darren McGrath gets over, McInerney, and it's driven forward again by Kilkenny. Uh, John Keelan, that was. Again, it's been recycled. They haven't really gained any yardage, but they're uh, in good position. McGrath again. Uh, he makes a little snipe, gains about five metres. He gets the support. Referee is trying to marshal the offside lines. Uh, successfully, I would hasten to add. Uh, ball now back with uh, Darren O'Brien. Uh, out to his captain, O'Connor, and it's taken on. Oh, it's knocked forward. Uh, a great chance there for Andy Nyenhouse, uh, the Canadian lock forward who uh, played in the, who was in the Canadian Youth Academy at one stage. If memory serves me right, scored a number of tries in this competition this season. He has indeed. He has indeed. Been very prolific for them. Yeah. But uh, it was a good spell there by Kilkenny Garden. It was. They, 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 their backs moved it well. They, they, they timed the pass well. They got Sean Moore and free in the wing. And I thought his opposite number was just going to try and shoulder charge him into uh, touchy ones. It was a strange, strange tackle by uh, Paul Bolger. But in the end, they got him to ground. But they made a good 40, 50 metres from uh, that run. So now the, a defensive scrum for Ennis uh, about 15 metres out of their own line. Evan let to feed. Despite the referee, I'm sure, having spoken to both front rows beforehand, he's not getting a lot of compliance at this stage. Uh, there. Do many referees get compliance at this stage? <laughs> um, you would hope so, but in fact, I get the impression they're just packing too low. Um, the Kenny especially are trying to bring the scrum low on the Enniscorthy feed to make it difficult for them. Um, but we'll see if they and of he can keep it a little bit higher this time. Quick feed in.
It's a better scrum kind of score. See, look, can you feel them? Uh, they've almost gone through the 90 there. Uh, yeah, Timmy, Timmy Morrissey managed to rescue it, but I think they're getting a penalty. Indeed, they are. So it's uh, an offside penalty against Kilkenny. So that's uh, three penalties in a row for Kilkenny in Rennes quick succession. Well, sorry, against Kilkenny, I meant in quick succession. So yeah. uh, um, referee certainly laying down his standards, setting out the standards. Play over in the far side of the field. There's a huge amount of cars over in the, the back pitches here, Darren. Absolutely jammed, and they're, and they're still still coming in. Yeah, good cr good crowd here. I suppose the, the good day. It's a it's a pretty central venue as well, and the pitch is in great shape. Uh, so uh, we've actually no reason why there can't be a, a really good game of rugby today. Yeah, that was a crooked throw there by David Murphy. Uh, it looked looked crooked from here. Uh, the angle that the jumper took it at, and uh, Tim Townsend, our referee, agrees. And now we have a scrum for Kilkenny. They have been disruptive on the escorts. They're getting their own ball, but it's been quite disruptive. But Kilkenny are managing to wheel them around. So it'll be interesting to see if Kilkenny, who looked to have the, what I would call the blockier kind of pack, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they uh, can keep a steady scrum and get clean ball away. So McGrath with the feed. And they come on. Could Kenny come under a little bit of pressure from Enescorti, who've taken it against the head. The ball shoots out the back. Uh, Enescorti gets it away. It comes out to Killian Lett. He's tackled just outside his 22. And Enescorti get there to set up the rook. Back to it, Ivan Poole, who has the sidestep one. Sidestep is second. Uh, he's tackled. But uh, Enescorti would seem to be in control of this rook. And uh, it's a matter of can they get it away. And it's uh, Evan Lett. With the box kick, Sean Moran is challenged. Oh, and he's well challenged by uh, number 11 for Enniscorti, Paul Bulger, who has won it back for the County Wexford side. Let to Poole, Evan Let, I should say. Poole's kick is up in the air and it's coming back, but it's taken superbly by Joe Manuel. Uh, Manuel is tackled on the 10 metre line of Enniscorti. Uh, can he get it back? It looks like he can. Well, the referee says, going forward, uh, pile up, and he gives the scrum to to uh, Kilkenny and I think actually it was uh, the tackle immediately after the mall that's why he's given the scrum to yeah. to Kilkenny. Yeah, a very good catch by Joe Manuel there and uh, he was then immediately tackled so he, he keeps possession of the ball by so doing and as, as it gets a little bit breezier here our papers start to blow around. <laughs> uh, Joe Manuel's father Simon captained uh, the 2001 team uh, that won the Towns Cup, the uh, Kilkenny team. So uh, he's trying to match his father. His father came from New Zealand, there's others, a New Zealand connection here today with the referee and and uh, Joe Manuel. And uh, Simon played for many years with Kilkenny. He also played AIL with, with uh, County Carlow when they were in the AIL and up in the upper reaches, the upper echelons of the AIL as well. So uh, um, yes, there were some heady days down in Carlow when they first came to AIL. I remember going down for their first home match, which was against Young Munster. And there was a quite enormous crowd down there that day. Um, Andy Melville was the star performer uh, for uh, Cardo in those days, a rampaging number eight who they used out in the centre on many occasions. Yes, he also fancied himself as a scrum half. Uh, and Andy, of course, is from New Zealand as well. And hopefully Andy's watching this telecast as well. And uh, if he is, we wish him well. He spent a long time uh, in, in, these, in these parts, uh, first Carlo, and then he coached in Nais for a while as well. So it's uh, Kilkenny attacking. Again, uh, this time uh, through their centre, Darren O'Brien, he's been very involved early on. McGrath's racing to get over to the breakdown, back to McInerney, onto his captain, Doc O'Connor, who drives forward, but uh, he's held up. So uh, can he get the ball to deck uh, from here? It looks as if he has. Um, and again, it's McGrath, uh, he feeds the ball out. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for Kilkenny, they're tackled into touch, and it's uh, a line out on the far side. We've played, uh, approaching, we're approaching the quarter hour mark, played about 14 minutes, and uh, I suppose it's uh, very much a, a two sides testing each other out, Gordon. It is, and I'm impressed by the Kilkenny backline. That's a couple of times now they've moved well. The one thing is, that, uh, there, at times, they, they're, it's the same in the professional game. The, the ball is slow to come away from the, the breakdown, and that allows the defence to set itself up, and any mismatches can be sorted out beforehand. 
Uh, they're getting good quick ball, but they're not using it quickly. And that was a fine take out of the lineup by Ennis Gorthy, who would drive forward again. But a man has gone off his own. This could well be a turnover. No, they haven't managed it. Um, Evan let a little dart around the blind side. He's tackled, not held. Uh, now he goes to ground and into touch on the far side. So Kilkenny will have a line out um, 10, minutes, 10 metres inside the Ennis Gorthy half. Uh, all the play has been down at that end, I think. It's likely Durham to spend, we're going to spend most time looking to our right because of the wind. Yeah, the wind is blowing uh, from left to right as we look. It's probably blowing a little into our faces as well, so it's probably blowing into the right corner, uh, not directly down the pitch, uh, which probably accounts for uh, the missed penalty effort by, uh, by McInerney early in the game. Uh, judging this wind is going to be tricky. Um, Enniscorty would be used to playing here. They play Kildare over in Division 1A until they got relegated this year. So Enniscorty would be very familiar with the pitch, whereas um, Kilkenny wouldn't be as familiar. Uh, and they won't Kilkenny play. have had a very good season, haven't they? They won Division 1B, and so we're up now into the, the top echelons uh, of Leinster Junior Rugby. And uh, I read a quote somewhere from their coach that they, they aren't going up there to make up the numbers. They're going to try and win the league next season. Ball is knocked on at the tail of the line out by. Uh, Kilkenny and uh, Ennis Gorty have taken advantage and uh, they moved the ball swiftly out to the left but unfortunately uh, Ross Barber, uh, full back, can't gather, ball was throwing, thrown at his toes and he couldn't pick it up and he knocks on. Yes, a poor, poor pass there. Uh, as we can tell from here, it is, it's quite a biting win here. Your hands will be cold, certainly mine are being a bit, bit nippy here. Uh, trying to hold our papers in, in, in place. I must say, Dermot, that we said it beforehand, the, our, our facilities in Eden Derry a couple of years ago in the, in the caravan were magnificent. Um, would you please do your best endeavours with uh, Bill Duggan to have that return to us for next year? Because it is quite, quite chilly here today um, as we're perched precariously up beside the camera uh, on the halfway line. There's three of us on top of the scaffolding. There's Gordon, and to his right is uh, Paul Goldsbury, the cameraman with a video on the net, uh, who are uh, producing this uh, uh, telecast. Um, as we line up a, another scrum here, it's uh, McGraw with the feed, uh, the team's uh, referees getting them to reset. Uh, so uh, what can, can he do off this scrum? Uh, so far, uh, the teams with the put-in have struggled. The referee's given a free kick, quickly taken by McGrath, out to McInerney. He gives it on to Darren O'Brien. Daz, as he's known, takes it, drives it forward, and uh, Kilkenny are on the attack here again through their captain, Doc O'Connor, uh, who has brought it ground. Uh, there's boots, a boot went in from Enniscorty to disrupt uh, the feed, but uh, it's their hooker, Jason Connolly, who takes it on. Ball went back according to the referee, but it looks like um, Enniscorty have managed to turn it over. Uh, Evan Lett. Uh, gets it out to, I think it's his brother Killian, Killian. I'm not sure from here, but uh, it's certainly Enniscorty in possession as they try to recycle it now and uh, give it to their, their veteran lock forward and coach, Decky O'Brien. Uh, of course, Decky works with you in the, in the Lenser Branch, isn't that right? Uh, yes, and, and Decky, Decky played in the 95 uh, Towns Cup final uh, down in, in Kilkenny when uh, Nais beat uh, Enniscorthy. Um, and uh, here he is 20 years later. Uh, playing in his third final, he played two years, three years ago when they beat Tullow, when Lennon Scorty beat Tullow uh, in Port Arlington. Uh, so he, he has a Towns Cup medal, but uh, 20 years later he's 41 years of age and he's just a, a warrior, I think, Gordon, is the best way of describing him. It's a fair achievement in the modern game to be still playing in your 40s, because the hits now um, have increased so substantially over the years. Um, when you wake up on a Monday morning and in your early 40s, it must be the most pleasant experience. <laughs> and of course, uh, Decky had a, uh, an illustrious career while he's working as a development officer for the South East with Leinster Rugby. Uh, Decky played for De La Salle Palmerston after leaving uh, in Escorti and went on to play for Leinster for uh, a few years. Uh, I recall him playing in the back row with Victor Costello and Liam Toland uh, on a famous night that they beat Leicester in Donnybrook uh, in the late 90s. Uh, Yes, I remember that. Remember that night. I uh, hadn't realised that Decky actually played in that game. Uh, that was a, f a famous night. Leicester came over thinking they would, they would hack up, and Leinster played some superb rugby to put them to the sword that night. Mark McHugh, if I recall, uh, had his kicking boots on that night and kicked the penalty goals from everywhere. <coughs> so Mark's father yesterday he was in the part of a very large crowd in the East Stand in, in uh, the Aviva Stadium, watching the Lansdowne Young Munster 
uh, semi-final of the AIL Division 1A. And of course, Mark's on the coaching ticket in Lansdowne, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, he yeah. cut his teeth with the Trinity under 20s uh, for a couple of years there, and is now. Uh, so that would explain what, why Reggie was there yesterday. Oh, I was ball fed in by Dundalk. Oh, sorry, by the, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's it's the uh, the black jerseys are throwing me. Um, in quick ball for Dundalk going on the ah a fine hit by Killian Lett there. Stop that in his tracks and again no I thought in a squad he wanna uh, turn that one over. It's the referees paying advantage uh, for a knock on in a uh, Scrum to uh, Kilkenny. Nice back play. The, 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 um, I like the way Rory McInerney, the out half for uh, Kilkenny, is uh, moving the ball. Yeah, and it was a big hit by Killian Lett on Ray Pembroke, the number six for Kilkenny, uh, as he came around the corner. Uh, Killian lined him up and uh, hit him very solidly. Uh, but the, the I know you made a Freud in a slip there mentioning Dundalk, and Dundalk looked to have secured their place in the final three weeks ago when they led Ennis Garty by 14 points with a uh, little over five minutes to go. and. Uh, Ennis Garty conjured up the comeback of all comebacks as a uh, Kilkenny attack here. Again, uh, it's their uh, winger Sean Morden who's tackled uh, outside the 22, driven forward again. Decky O'Brien with the big tackle uh, for um, Ennis Garty. Uh, Martin Lahey takes it forward uh, and then out to McGrath. McGrath passes a little backwards, uh, but uh, McInerney tries a, a snap, drop it goal, but unfortunately for him, he never caught it and it drifted harmlessly left and wider posts. So it'll yeah. be a 22 metre dropout for Ennis Corty. We've, uh, we've had a couple of big charges by the uh, Kilkenny front row, um, especially the Martin, uh, Wayne Kavner, number one, looks uh, dangerous when he's got ball in hand. Um, Ennis Corty now, we've uh, almost 20 minutes gone, and uh, they've weathered this little bit of Kilkenny pressure. They uh, Match still scoreless, which I think Dermot will suit Dennis Gorthy playing into what is a strong breeze. Um, as the Kenny run back at them again. Uh, McInerney is going to switch there with um, the Sean Bourne. It's Darren O'Brien again driving forward uh, with a bit of assistance from uh, Ray Pembroke, but he may have been. Uh, uh, isolated, but they still managed to get the ball wide left. Nyan House uh, again, it's uh, Lahey, Lahey charging forward. This is about the third or fourth uh, big charge forward by Lahey. Back to Aline Caddy, the full back, again to Pembroke, who drives forward, manages to feed the ball back. It's still pressure from Kilkenny. Um, this time, Doc O'Connor onto Nyan House. Uh, and Nyan House manages to get back to uh, O'Connor again. So they're again on the 22 of Ennis Garty. It's back with McInerney. McInerney has a pop, pop forward. He sends it out to his uh, flank forward, John Phelan. Uh, Phelan drives forward. But Ennis Garty gets a relieving penalty as um, Kilkenny are penalised for holding on the ground. Good pressure, but uh, good defence as well. It was. It was a good turnover there by uh, Ennis Garty. Uh, they tacked their in and the. the and a scorthy man into the jackal position very quickly and affected a, what was a, a vitally needed turnover for him because Kilkenny are just starting to put the faces together. Dermot putting a lot of pressure on the end defence, uh, but and a are, are holding form firm to date. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's I mean it, it's it's tremendous pressure from Kilkenny and they're they're using their back row and their front row to tremendous effect to to try and create openings. Uh, but so far the Enniscorthy defence is standing very firm and uh, not uh, not being breached and uh, um, and that augurs well for them as you know we've been saying uh, many a time that the wind is very strong here. It's favouring Kilkenny and they'll certainly want some points on the board. Uh, otherwise they they they'll feel that. Uh, that they're going to be in big trouble in the second half, but it's a, a penalty. A penalty now. We've played. We're, we've played about 23 minutes here at, uh, at Kildare Rugby Club. Uh, still no score. Penalty for Endescorthy, and I think I see Ivan Poole, their out half, uh, going over to uh, 
to take it, although he just walks past the ball, and it's Killian Lett who has the ball in his hand. And it was interesting because um, that semi-final where Ennis Garty mounted that magnificent comeback, and he actually made no ground on that kick, you know, went almost straight across the park, and that's the strength of the wind. But uh, Killian started out half against uh, Dundalk, and uh, for that late, that late rally, uh, um, it was Ivan Poole who went into out half, Killian went out into the centre, and uh, that was part of the, the reason why the, the, the the comeback was mounted with three very, very late tries. So we have a, a bit of a mess going on at the line out. Players up in the air early. Referee uh, gets to start the process again. Yes, it was a, an incredible comeback by Dennis Gorsi. I think you were at that game. Um, and you must have been extremely worried at one stage because it looks as if the dock would be, were, were going to come through to the final. And of course, the dock. Uh, have also, also been involved in the round robin uh, qualifiers. We yesterday beat the DLSP to go into to join the senior ranks of AIL rugby for the first time in their history. And it would be an interesting um, situation between us if uh, uh, what, what might have ensued. It could be a very interesting phone call on the Monday morning. Um, can you move? No, I can't move. Can you move? No, I can't move. Um, and it could have led to some interesting dynamics. So um, yes, as, I was, as I was following it on Twitter that Sunday evening, uh, I thought this, oh dear, we've got real problems here. And then the comeback of all comebacks came, and I think you were a very relieved man at uh, the fact that the scores he managed to snuck into the final. Yeah, and uh, here they are still defending with their, a knock on at the, the Kilkenny Wonder. The Enniscorthy line out there, but uh, a knock on by Scrum Half McGrath, and it's uh, a scrum now for Enniscorthy. So um, I suppose with 25 minutes on the clock, we would be fair to say that. Ennis Gorty are the happier team. They defended well. They've they've uh, um, kept their opponent scoreless. And uh, if they can keep this going till half time, well then they must fancy their chances after the break. Yeah, they have defended very well. Because in fairness, Kilkenny have thrown a mixture of uh, good driving play uh, by their by their front and back rows and mixed it with some very good uh, passing in the back line. But uh, Ennis Gorty defence has been very well organised. Has fits aside coached by Decky O'Brien and um, another scrum has uh, ended up in a mess and the referee now is, is speaking to two front rows, uh, two props on this side, uh, number three for Kilkenny is Martin Lahey, or Leahy, and uh, the number one uh, for Ennis Gorthy, James Doyle, and he's told them exactly what he wants and hopefully they've listened and we won't have uh, continuing problems with the scrum. So they engage again. Heaven let, ready to feed the scrum. In it goes, and it's down it goes, and the referee's given Ennis Gorty the, the benefit of it, and he's, I think he's saying a whipped wheel. So uh, yeah, they wheeled a couple of scrums mm. earlier on, but there was, they were controlled. Uh, that was a, a fast whip, and referees now will automatically penalise that because uh, it is. It's not allowed, and it's also dangerous because the scrum goes down, the, the front row are off balance, and that's where you could have problems with injuries. So it's a good decision, and hopefully he will uh, take no no further messing from the front rows. Uh, that was a better kick that that, that time. Um, yeah, much better kick by Killian Let. Uh, he gains about uh, 15, 20 meters, which into that wind is a is a very good gain. It is funny you were talking about the, the changes they made in the semi-final against the dog. Uh, when I met Tony Enser yesterday, the first question he asked me was who's playing out half in the Scorthy. So when I told him it was Ivan Poole, he was delighted. He didn't want to see Killian that play uh, at uh, out half. He thought they were a much better team with the formation they currently have out here today. And the Scorthy are fringing on the offside line here. They are. They're after losing the line out. Uh, they overthrew it and it's been uh, picked up by Kilkenny. Uh, but there's no scrum half there. The referee is saying play on and uh, it looks like Ennis Scorthy might have turned it over. Indeed they have. So. And Escorty with a good field position here. Decky O'Brien went to throw it right, but uh, a referee and one of his players were standing between him and who he intended passing it to. He gets it out to Ivan Poole. The referee has the hand out for advantage. Uh, good break by, I think it's Ivan Jacob. Uh, good attack up the right flank. Um, the support arrives. The referee says no advantage, and he's going back for a penalty, uh, which is around the halfway line. Although uh, he's uh, on the 10-metre line, so... Uh, a chance for Ennis Gorty to eat a bit more into the clock uh, and uh, probably inch their way up along the, the far touch line. 
And this is almost uh, the first time Ellis Gorty have actually got into the uh, Kilkenny half. Uh, the game has been played almost completely uh, inside Ellis Gorty's territory. Uh, they have been pretty disciplined. They've only given away the one penalty uh, shot at goal. Um, and as you say, with you know, the match approaching the half hour mark at this stage, Ellis Gorty will be much the happier side uh, to keep this game scoreless. Their lineup, their lineup hasn't been great. They've lost a couple, so uh, this is a, a, a big opportunity for their hooker, David Murphy, to, to find one of his jumpers. Uh, Tomas Stamp, I see, uh, at the front. Uh, the ball seemed to uh, it's been rescued by somebody. I, I'm not sure how that was rescued. It looked like Decky O'Brien got it. Uh, Killy, or Evan Lett, out to pool. Out to Daniel Pym, who makes a bit of a break. Uh, Ross Barber, the full-back, comes into the line, but he's well tackled uh, by John Phelan of Kilkenny. Back with uh, Evan Lett, out to Ivan Poole, uh, ball uh, slides back but Tomas Stamp uh, comes uh, to the rescue. Uh, again it's uh, Evan Lett to Ivan Poole who sends the ball into the 22 and uh, a mark is called on the far side by Joe Manuel and uh, it's uh, a chance for Kenny to clear their lines. Yeah, it was a strong break there. Uh, if Ross Barber had been able to, he was tackled just in time because he had two men outside him. And if he had been able to get that ball away, I think we might have been for our first score. But a, a good defensive tackle uh, brought him to ground. And now Kilkenny will have a, a line out about 10 metres outside uh, 22. So we have another line-out for Ennis Gorty. Their line-out hasn't really functioned that well. They managed to rescue the last one. It seemed to, uh, it didn't seem to go according to plan. So it's been thrown uh, at number, I think that was number six, Gordon, was it? Um, yeah, up the front of the line Sean Wall, they're, yeah. Playing the, they're playing a the safe option there uh, because this, this strong breeze to try and throw long will be very difficult. So the safe ball is to throw it at, at your, your two jumper. And they've, um, Oh, and a good Evan Lett. through there by Evan Lett. Uh, good, good tackle by John Phelan. But uh, Daniel Pym, the centre, manages uh, to get the ball out, and uh, it's still Ennis Gorty uh, attacking. Uh, Evan Lett is down on the, on the field. Uh, it looks like he's uh, picked up an injury, so Ennis Gorty down to 14 while they uh, attack here inside the Kilkenny 22. Uh, so they'll have to. Daniel Pym has gone in scrum half. The referee's put up his hand for uh, advantage. So what can uh, as Sean Wall drives forward? What can Ennis Gorty do here? Uh, ball is out to Ivan Poole. Poole taking on his opposite number. Uh, McInerney makes the tackle. Uh, the, the cavalry arrives for Ennis Gorty, but the referee has gone back. He's saying there's no advantage to Ennis Gorty, and. Uh, I think he's given a penalty. He hasn't really indicated yet, has he, Gordon? I think well, it's he a looked penalty. like he, he gave a free kick, actually. He gave a signal of a free kick, so we just have to wait and see. I think he wants to speak to a Kilkenny player uh, for whatever that impingement was. And he's talking to the captain, uh, David O'Connor, Doc O'Connor. So uh, he's got his message to him. Uh, meanwhile, Evan Lett is receiving treatment. Uh, it was a, a lovely sniping break he made. Uh, but uh, he got tackled by John Phelan, the flanker for Kilkenny, and uh, he still hasn't got up, so he's gingerly picking himself up now, or sitting up. Uh, the referee is talking to uh, Decky O'Brien, so we just have to wait and see. It'll be interesting, and they're going to have to make a substitution here. I see the signal. Um, mm. And Evan Lett's going to come up. Are there rolling substitutions in this competition, Dermot? There are indeed, yeah. yeah. So Hugh O'Neill is coming on to replace Evan Lett. Uh, Hugh scored uh, the first of the three tries uh, late in the game that helped Ennis Gorty secure their, their berth here today in the semi-final. And it is a, a full penalty indeed. I see Ivan Poole uh, lining up the kick at goal on the far side. So it's uh, Ennis Gorty's first chance to put points on the board. And it would be a huge score for them if they did, to, if they can go 3-0 up. Here goes Poole. Strikes it well and up go the flags. So we have the opening score. Uh, 33 minutes into the game, it's 3-0 for Ennis Gorty. Ivan Poole uh, with the penalty kick into the wind. 
I would have to say, Dermot, that has been against the run of play. They haven't been up in, in um, uh, sort of their first excursion into the Kenny 22. And they've, got, they've come away with points, so they've uh, done well as we try and rescue a pen out of the folder. Kickoff up to 22 is taken taken by Anascorthy. Uh, the attacker hasn't released the player. Uh, the ball going to come back now. And I think the Kilkenny defender is very lucky uh, not to get penalised. There he didn't seem to release Stecky O'Brien at all. He will catch. It's up and under by Anascorthy. They were able to rescue him earlier on. Uh, the ball has been knocked backwards. Uh, McInerney feeds it on. Yes, uh, forward pass has been given and a scrum to Ennis Gorthy. Yeah, and I see uh, full back Liam Caddy uh, sitting down. Was he, I'm not sure if he's tying all his laces or he's going to need some treatment. Uh, but uh, Caddy, is, uh, Caddy is born in Wales and he has played uh, sevens rugby for Barbados. Uh, I think it's a Welsh mother and a Barbados father, is his right, pedigree. Right, right combination, that. Yeah, so, uh, Welsh, Barbadian. And now he turns up in Kilkenny. That's it, yeah. So, uh, How long has he been playing in Kilkenny, Dermot? I'm not sure. He, I don't think he featured in last year's final, uh, so I presume he's uh, new this season. I'm just, uh, nine house. There's actually nine changes to the 20 that uh, played in last year's Towns Cup final. So it's quite a, it's quite a turnover of players. And Enniscorthy won the Towns Cup three years ago, and there's only three of that team uh, playing today. Uh, Decky O'Brien, Ivan Poole, and full-back Ross Barber. That is a... A huge number of changes in, in three years, even the nine for Kilkenny from last season. Uh, it is becoming very much a young man's game now, certainly in the, in the All-Ireland League. Uh, the, the levels have gone down, but um, the age levels every year seem to be getting lower and lower. As Ennis Gorthy got a good push on the scrum, they've started to assert themselves on the scrum. Ball is fed out to Hugh O'Neill, uh, scrum half. Uh, they, they went up the blind, didn't make any progress. And now they're back to the, the short popping. Uh, game so have it they drive forward again they've actually lost a couple of yards and this little so smart oh yeah the ball is chipped through this could be a big kick down field um, Joe Manuel with the clearance uh, it's bouncing inside the 22 rather awkwardly uh, but it's gathered I think it's Ivan Jacob uh, who takes it on gets about 10 meters and uh, Killian let this time takes it forward and Killian beats one or two men before he's eventually brought to ground. This time it's back with uh, number 11, uh, Ivan Jacob. Oh, sorry, I should say number 11 is Paul Bulger. So it was Paul Bulger who, who uh, uh, made that sortie rather than Ivan Jacob. Uh, it was a very, very tricky ball. A very tricky ball he had to deal with going back into his 22. Uh, so it's a line out for Kilkenny. Kilkenny um, under a bit of pressure to deliver a score now, Gordon, aren't they? They are. They must be. Uh, it's, it's certainly what you consider maybe a, a 10, 12 point wind. And here they find themselves three points down, approaching half time. Uh, Ennis Gorsi's defence has been very, very solid. Uh, ball, ball comes oh, out. Oh, break to by Sean, Sean Moore. He's, after, he's uh, after bouncing off one tackle. He uh, drives forward, makes about 20 metres. Uh, the ball is there for Darren McGrath. He gets it out to McInerney. McInerney makes a little break. He gives it out to Daz O'Brien. He drives forward. Support arrives. Uh, the ball is again with McGrath. This time it's out to Caddy. A reverse pass to Jason Connolly. Connolly is tackled. Uh, it's all after going a, a little slow now for Kilkenny, but they're still going forward. Uh, out to Nyan House. Takes two men to slow his progress. Back with McGrath. Uh, Wesley Carter, the other lock forward, uh, pops it off. And I think that's Martin. That's, it's knocked forward. I think it's uh, Ray Pembroke who knocked it forward, uh, the flanker. No, it was a factor captain, uh, Doc O'Connor, who took that ball off Wes Carter and uh, knocked it on, unfortunately, for Kilkenny. There was a very vital hand trip uh, by the Ennis Gorthy captain, Killian Lett there. Joe Manuel looked like he was away. And I don't, a despairing hand came out from uh, Killian Lett, which uh, brought Manuel to ground. Otherwise, uh, we could well have had a score there for Kilkenny because um, he looks a, a big, strong boy. Um, 
Uh, Killian that is uh, trying to walk off that injury, or that, Evan Lett, I should say, I see him uh, trying to walk off that injury down to our left hand side here. So he might be, but he might rejoin the fray as it is his replacement, uh, Huey. O'Neill, who's feeding the ball into uh, what now looks a, a, a much stronger Ennis Gorty scrum. The last three scrums have been very well controlled by Ennis uh, Again, it's Killian Lett who receives the ball from Ivan Poole, drives forward just outside the 22. This time it's back to Sean Wall, who's tackled again outside the 22. And uh, Ennis Gorty just going through the phases here, uh, trying to but the referees penalised them, so it's a breakdown penalty and a chance for McInerney to level the scores. And this could be some vitally needed points here for Kilkenny. They, um, in the score, they looked like they were trying to run down the clock there and they have been penalised for not releasing on the ground. Um, and as we approach half time, Kilkenny now have a chance to uh, get their first points on the board. If Rory McInerney missed an early penalty. Uh, but now he has a, a further chance now to um, tie the scores um, as it must be very close to half time. Yeah, we're just, we're, 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 the, the clock has just ticked past 40. We're just going uh, drifting into injury time now and there, there was a few injuries so we could have three or four minutes added on here. But it's a, it's a very important kick. Uh, the last thing Kilkenny need is to go in behind at the break. So it's a, uh, it's a good angle as well for uh, the right footed kicker. Uh, just uh, between the, t the 5 and the 15 and a couple of metres outside at 22. So McInerney with a chance to level the scores. He seemed to strike that well. The crowd behind are uh, lifting their voices in... Uh, in, in victory, well, victory with the kick, I should say, not victory in the game overall, but yeah, it's a successful kick. Uh, scores three points all. McInerney has levelled it uh, as we head into injury time. It was a fine, uh, very well struck kick, and interestingly, uh, I watched the kicker and he kept his head right down. Well after the ball was gone, his head was still down. Uh, he seemed to snap at the first one, but that there, he's obviously grown into the game now, and that was a, a lovely uh, strike to bring Kilkenny level. So a couple minutes in the injury time, and that's um, not Killian Lett's best effort. Uh, it was a dropout, we we're going to have a scrum back. Uh, he seemed to slice that off the outside of his foot. Uh, and that one, he's put his team under a bit of pressure here now. Got a scrum yeah. in the middle of the field, uh, with attacking options on both sides. And it looks like Kilkenny are lining up with all their backs on this right-hand side. I'm trying to watch the fourth officials watch here and there may be about two minutes of injury time so uh, uh, it's a scrum for Kilkenny uh, and uh, it looks like they probably have time to uh, uh, launch an attack try and get their noses in front before the break but the last couple of Ennis Gorty scrums have been solid I wonder what pressure they can put on Kilkenny here mm. Well, they put great pressure on there, but Kilkenny have managed to rescue the ball. Um, and, uh, and a good clearance to touch by uh, McGrath. Uh, brings play deep inside the Ennis Gorty 22. So a bit of defending to be done by the County Wexford side uh, before we get to half time. Yes, they did well to get, to get down there because the scrum, as, as you were alluding to, is coming under some serious pressure now from a, uh, a, what looks like a more dominant uh, Ennis Gorty pack. Yeah, so a big throw here for David Murphy to Ennis Gorty Hooker. Can he find his man? It's going towards Sean Wall, but it's uh, one at the back by Darren McGrath for Kilkenny. So McGrath uh, is, there's no scrum half because McGrath was standing at the tail of the line out. So uh, it's the, the, the big boys who are taking the ball forward. I see uh, Lahi in there again and Wayne Kavanagh. And McGrath is now in the scrum half position. Uh, he feeds it out to Doc O'Connor. And uh, it's a chance for Kilkenny to get their nose in front before the break. Sean Morden out to uh, McInerney. What can they do here? It's uh, Liam Caddy with the break. He drives forward. He's tackled about 10 metres from the Enniscorty goal line. McGrath with the, with the ball again. Ba back to McInerney. Puts a little bit behind him. Uh, but uh, again, good tackling by Enniscorty. Uh, drives Kilkenny back a yard or two. McGrath again. This time on to John Phelan, who's gang tackled towards the touchline. Still in play, though. So it's uh, McGrath again. 
This time uh, up to second row, Wes Carter. Carter goes to ground. The forwards arrive to support. Out it comes to McInerney. McInerney skip pass to Pembroke, but Pembroke is tackled by Decky O'Brien. Uh, ball goes to ground, and the referee says it was not forward, and it's a scrum to Ennis Gorty. And with that, the halftime whistle goes, and it's the two teams locked at three points apiece in the 90th Towns Cup final. Yes, uh, we'll have a five minute break now. Uh, I think Ennis Gorsi Dermot will feel the happier of the two sides. Um, that they're going to turn around with what is a, a considerable breeze behind them now. Uh, I would imagine they will kick for position. Uh, Kilkenny uh, have uh, played well. Uh, that, that last attack, though, some things up. McInerney ran right across the field. They, they had the, the options outside and um, they uh, didn't take them. And we will be back here in Beach Park in about five minutes of the second half. Ooh. It's my first tea and coffee. <laughs> 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 Where's the <been> token? <laughs> 